Introducing incredible students to great colleges, one story at a time. This is the College Match Podcast, and today I'm introducing you to Oscar. When it came time to choose a high school, Oscar decided on one that was a little bit farther, but would allow him to follow his passion for sciences. Thanks to the support of his principal, family, and teachers, he's become the captain of the hydrogen-powered car team on his campus, and his team are world champions for the Horizon Grand Prix. He's got a great story to share, so stick around. If this is your first time tuning in, take a quick listen to our intro episode, where you will learn all about the podcast and the students you'll hear from. So to all the dreamers, believers, and achievers, teachers, educators, and supporters. Thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Welcome to the first ever episode of the College Match podcast. I'm so excited to introduce you today to a very special guest named Oscar. I'm going to let him share a little bit more about himself in a bit and share a little bit more about a really awesome project he has going on. Before we can get to that story, I think it's important that our audience knows um, about where you come from. So can you share a little bit about where were you born and where did you grow up? So I was born here in the United States in the small town of Huntington Park. And the majority is, of course, immigrant families of Latino or mixed backgrounds. And that's pretty much the 100% of the people that comprise the community. And what brought your family? Or is your family originally from Huntington Park or do they, did they immigrate here as well? They immigrated here as well from El Salvador. Okay, can you oh share a little bit more about that? I didn't know you were from El Salvador. What part of El Salvador and what brought your family from there to here? Well, my father's side is from the, the more native and indigenous side of the of the country, but my mother is more of an immigrant to El Salvador than any other mix up she has in her blood, right? So they both are immigrants, right? They came to the United States seeking what everybody else wanted, the American dream. My mother, my mother faced a lot of, you know, home issues. You know, she didn't always have a father to look up to. And her mother was always, you know, busy with other stuff because she ran the business, right? So she grew up in a very troublesome household that defined who she is now. She's a very strong and independent person. And my father grew up in a more, like I said, a more native and indigenous background. He grew up with very, very, very limited resources. Sometimes he didn't have water to drink for, to drink for, and not even electricity, you know, and that defined who he is now, right? He came from a very poor background, but now he's he's made himself um, a businessman, you know. He has his own business. He's he's making himself in the world, and he's giving us what he didn't have as a as a child, right? He didn't have a he didn't have any parents, right? So his only person that he could look up to was himself the only person he could invest in was himself and that proved to be very important right because now he's a very independent person but he's able to work with a lot of people you know most importantly make money and be a successful entrepreneur got it and did they both go to school yes they both finished high school they met here in the united states okay so now going you know fast forward you're 17 years later and you guys have established your space here Um, tell me a little bit about your family and your lifestyle and what you call home. So I live here with my two parents and my younger sister. And a few blocks away from here, my aunt lives here. So tell me a little bit about your high school and what brought you to that high school and what have you kind of learned along the way? At the end of eighth grade, I was faced with the decision Will I follow my friends or will I follow opportunity and potential? Because I could either choose to go with the same school they were going to or take a completely different path and go to a school in Southgate, which is 15 or 20 minutes away, right? So that was the hardest, one of the hardest decisions I had to make at the time. And I decided to take that path and go to Steam Legacy in Southgate because I saw more opportunity and potential going there. What did you, what were you striving for? 
well, early on, I, I just knew I wanted to do something in science. You know, I was very, I was hungry for, for knowledge. I was, all my teachers described me as curious and they even told me, you don't belong here. You have to go somewhere where more people are like you. Mm-hmm. And it sounds like you took that initiative in a different way by saying, by kind of taking ownership of your education and saying, I found a school that fits my interests. Yeah. And so if we're talking about STEAM, um, can you explain what STEAM stands for? What does that mean? So science, technology, engineering, arts, and maths. And so uh, what, what about STEAM caught your eye? Where, where there, what programs did they have there that made you want to make that transition? I saw that ambition, that, um, that sort of want to improve the, the school in any other way. And you know, I was right. The principal, Carla Barrera, was, was an incredible person. Right? She was out there contacting these people and telling, I need this program in my school because I want more students to see the outside world. And over time, that's in my 10th grade year, she, she motivated more students to join the hydrogen program. And mm-hmm. at the time, you know, you could say the program was a failure because we had gone to world finals and came in last place. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it was just the beginning of what was to come. So it sounds like you all in your time there have instituted a program. You called it the hydrogen program. Yeah. So can you share a little bit about the inception of the program? Who started it? Uh, what were the, you said there were some quote unquote failures that you may have seen, but it sounds like those failures only pushed you harder. There wasn't any proof that the program was going to be successful. This was this was the principal predicting that this program was going to be successful and what the opportunity was going to be for students. You know, and the, the district listened, right? To convert a library into a lab is a very costly program, a process, I mean, because you see all around us in the other districts, you know, they have private funding, they have millions of dollars available at any time to invest in students. And here in these type of communities that are mostly of ethnic backgrounds, those resources aren't readily available for everyone. We need to start creating the next generation of engineers, of the next generation of leaders that are going to change the world. So the hydrogen project, tell me more about that. I, what is that? Sounds so interesting. It's basically uh, the simple idea is you make a car that runs on hydrogen with the kit you're given to, and you race it against other people. But the your the amount of des- um, flexibility and design you have is up to you. The sky's the limit, mm-hmm. right? So with that, we have a lot of, like I said, a lot of flexibility, what we can do. And from there, you know, we started with the kit, we developed more and more and more, and, you know, today we're world champions. Tell me about when you finally made it to that championship. Yeah, so we started with the local races here in Southgate, and then we moved on to races in Los Angeles, and then we were invited to a race in Canada, but we couldn't go for the financial reasons. And then with those two races, we were we qualified to go to finals. We were invited to go to finals, and we went. And the pr- race took place in the Czech Republic, and we competed against nine other countries and won. And so what has happened since then? And tell me about some of the thing- open doors that that led to. So the open doors started way before we were were champions right because the race organizers would come to our school and see what we were doing and even outside um independent people would come see what we're doing at school so what they realized is that we're ahead of the game we're 10 years ahead of everyone because of of course the resources we have and the amount of innovation that we've done right we were the first team to make a car that runs purely on hydrogen Wow. Where can I buy one? (laughs) One day. That's really soon. I hope so. Right. Um, We're working on a patent. Oh, nice. So you're working on a patent now. So not only has it led to some like media coverage, right? You've been on, tell me about that. You've been on 
news broadcasts and other portals yeah. before? So we've been on Telemundo, we've been on AB7 News, we've been on LA Times, we've been on La Opinion, and a number of smaller journalists that they helped us get more exposure. Right, because they their selling point is right. We're we're the low income background. We come from Latino Latino families and Latino communities that were able to go across the world, and well, beat nine other countries. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's a very inspirational thing for other people like us. You know, we're I hate to say this, we're not the white privileged. We're not we don't have millions of dollars available all the time. So we made the best of what we had. And now I'm glad you know, news sources are using it as an example for other people. Because I think that's the most important thing. We have to get more people inspired to do what we're doing. And either be in the same field or in other fields like medicine, politics, or, or anything else. Mm hmm. I mean, it sounds like you guys are truly meeting up to your name, STEAM Legacy, yeah. and creating a legacy and a, and a path for future low-income, first-generation, you know, minority students to see that they can do it, too. So, Oscar, you shared a lot about the team effort and things that you've been doing as a team, but what is your role on the team? So, I've been considered the captain of the team, and... But my main role in the team is lead mechanic. And as a as a captain, before races and during races, I organize people and I organize what we're doing. So I give roles to people. I assign who's going to be doing what, when, and where to facilitate us not having any problems during the race. Assuming that position because the teacher can't help us, it helps me become more independent right because the teacher during the races only can give us emotional support mm. so he can only be on a headset telling us don't crash or don't do this on on the race track but he can't manage anything he can't touch anything mm. so that responsibility comes on to me so now i'm i can handle the pressure in a six hour race and I can handle the pressure of people not listening, right? Just because even in the world final, we'd had hours and hours of practicing and hours of prepping. We still had a lot of problems, but those are just part of the process, right? So it's part of that learning experience that I got of being a leader in a very hot, tense environment. And it also sounds like one of your biggest missions, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong, is also to pay it forward and give back to your community. Yes. Uh, you're not only doing that, it sounds, by uh, creating a legacy and encourage building these programs at your school so that other students can feel inspired just like you did. Uh, but now, obviously during COVID, there was something you were meant to do. Can you share what has changed since March when we all went under quarantine? Well, I wanna start with what I was going to do. So at the end of the season, we'll were declared world champions, 40, about 40 schools from the LASD district joined the program. And what does that tell me is that these are teams that are starting from step one, right? They're, they don't have the thousands of dollars and resources like we do. So, so I would serve to them as a resource. I would let them come into our school, teach them personally, one-on-one, -on -one, what to do right because I don't want them to go to the first race and you know not know what to do there's a lot of students that will are going to surely fail their first race and I don't want them to be discouraged after this the first race I want them to keep going because I want them to also go through what I did right I, wa I don't want to be the only world champion in Southgate I want to be the first one the first of many Right. Right. So I wanted to start an internship with previous students that would go out to middle schools and um, elementary schools and teach students what is to come. But then COVID came and, you know, that stopped everything. But, you know, after all this, I'm, I'm sure I will keep going on that. I don't want to, you know, set it aside because I know that's going to be a very important um legacy I leave that will be important to other students. Okay. Yeah. And you had already been invited somewhere this summer, right? 
yeah, this summer we're going to go to the Netherlands and compete again, but COVID again canceled that. And we were going to go possibly to the Japan to the fuel cell expo. And, you know, that was going to be an even more, um, there was even going to be more exposure to what we're seeing now, right? Uh, we're going to see Toyota unveil their first fuel cell bus and a bunch of other companies unveil their fuel cell technology. And of course, we were going to be next to the Olympics. Mm-hmm. It's true. It would have been all around the same time. So it sounds like so much was impacted now in your rising senior year. Although all of this has changed, it sounds like it hasn't stopped you. So what are you all yeah. working? What are you all working on now? So our teacher came up to us once through a Zoom meeting and asked, "What are we going to do?" Right? Because all of our equipment is stuck in a classroom. We can't race, we can't practice, we can't do anything that we used to do. So I gave him a suggestion. Why don't we use the resources that we can to help fight the, the virus? You know, and that was in the form of um, making PPE, personal, personal protection equipment for the people, right? Because you know, our supply chains were all disrupted face mask, gloves, and a bunch of other equipment, you know, is not readily available for everyone in the world, especially here in our, in our community, right? The majority of our equipment has gone to um, the people who actually need it, who are in the line of combat, like our um, doctors, our nurses, our people that are important, right? And, you know, it's, it's important to serve them first because they're the ones that are going to serve us when we get sick. So what I'm thinking is we have this equipment, we have the resources, so let's give back to our community. You know, not in a form of making money or capitalizing off people's suffering, just to give to solve a problem that we're facing today. And that's through making masks and making um, face shields, making uh, gloves, making something that is gonna help people today. So we started with the idea that we're gonna make the equipment and we started brainstorming, researching, collecting data and then we started to you know gather all our data and then decide what we're going to make and we decided on what people wanted so people decided they wanted face shields and reusable face masks so we're in the process of starting that, that production right and then with the rising of cases and people more worrying now they're looking for other resources and other ways to protect themselves so using a 3D printer, which is so cool. I've never seen one before. Um, what have you guys created so far? Or have you created anything so far? So I have my first prototype here with me. And it right. looks like this. So it's, a, it's going to be a reusable face mask that you, know, you can wear whenever you want. And you don't have to throw it out. The only thing that you have to throw out is the filter that we're going to design and make. So you're going to save cost on buying masks. And I think you're going to be more protected, right? Because in my opinion, a regular surgical mask doesn't protect you, right? If it was protecting you, we'd have less cases. We'd have less mortality rates. You know, the, our curve would be smaller if a mask truly protected you. It's a great alternative because you don't have to first waste a lot of money and it's more effective in fighting the virus. Mm -hmm. That's so interesting. And so did you design that? prototype yourself? Yes, we, I designed it myself, but of course, through, with inspiration from my teacher, inspiration from other students, and he let me borrow a small 3D printer, and I printed this on my, here in my house. And how long would something like that take you to create? Since it's a small printer, it's four hours. Wow, so... But with um, printers that are available to us at, at school, it would probably take 30 minutes, but mm -hmm. we're working through that process to get access to those printers and then ramp up production. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. And so obviously your vision in the end is to somehow create these reusable masks, make them, if not free, affordable for the community you live in and yes. accessible. And it sounds like your energy and your soul and you know everything that you've worked hard for for the next couple of years are going into this. So what do you do for fun? Since I've been stuck at home, I've been able to finish a lot of car projects I have. I like to restore old cars. So I have an old BMW and an old Land Cruiser that 
you know, I'm working slowly to get to. And now that I have time, I even bought another BMW and I'm trying to restore that too. So that's what I do to, for fun and try to get my mind off what's going on in the world. So going towards college, we know in a couple of months you're going to be applying. Um, what are you planning on? Like what kind of college are you interested in applying for and where are you looking right now? So I want a college that is as ambitious as me in learning. Right? I think having that knowledge in me is the most important thing. You know, I've always wanted to fundamentally understand the world around me because when I was younger, much younger, I wanted to be a theoretical physicist, you know, and that was because I lived in the small bubble that was my home, right? I wasn't exposed to the world around me. I didn't know the issues that were facing humanity. So as I grew, I, I saw the world, I saw climate change, I saw wanting a sustainable future for myself and for my kids and for future generations. And I said, I want to change the world. I want to change how people how people transport themselves or how people interact with the world. Because I think that's the most important thing today. Because mm-hmm. as I think it's a whole movement, but it's taking a very slow approach to attacking it. So what I want a college that has that same um, goal as me. You know, they want to have a lasting impact, whether that be through themselves doing it or educating the next generation of students that are going to change the world. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful and so inspiring. So, you know, if you were to share anything else about you that you feel maybe that I haven't asked yet or that you feel you want people to know about you, what would they be? I don't want to chase money. I don't want to chase what everybody else wants. I want to change the world as it is today. You know, I've always thought that a sustainable future is obtainable, but we need to start now, right? We need to start educating the right people the right way. We need to start making that generation that's more climate conscious and scientifically illiterate instead of illiterate, right? Because you ask someone today what is causing climate change what is causing pollution and they'll give you a very generic answer but do will they know how to fundamentally attack the pro- the problem no so we need to start now with education we need to start now with more programs like the one i'm in mm. to start creating those people that are going to change the world right mm-hmm. so that's what i think people should know about me that i want to have a lasting impact whether that be that i become famous or I just do it on my own, right? Would you say that some of that drive you have is due to your, your parents and some, some of the maybe struggles that they've been through? Yes, because, you know, life has, hasn't always been this easy for everyone, and especially for me, right? I haven't always had this house that I'm in. I haven't always had the opportunity to say, I live a good life and I have food under food on my table and a roof to live under. So. Those were the early challenges that I lived through. Mm. So to to slowly be prog- progressing in life and through society, you know, it's it's inspiring to me to tell me, you know, there's more to do. You know, there's more people like me that live through the same, and I want to inspire them to do other things in life. Like I felt that life slapped me in the face and told me to wake up, right? Because like I said, I was living in this bubble that was my parents that I was shielded from the world outside. Mm-hmm. And once I started, you know, putting myself out there, forming networks with people and relationships that I now have, you know, I, it changed me completely, right? I see the world entirely different from now. I see that there's people in Europe with pro- more problems than me. I see everything much more differently. And, uh, and traveling the world is nice, but, you know, what I got from that from that trip is, that there's much more to the world, right? that I need to grow beyond what, what's here in, the, in California or here in Huntington Park, right? There's more potential to me than just saying I travel the world. Yeah, most definitely. Um, so, you know, with that, I think you've shared so much. You've been, you know, so open. So thank you for all of that. I'm going to end now with, just another fast round of questions. 
Um, and this time, these are questions that you actually may see in some of your college applications in the future. Um, so my first question in the, in the fast round is, what is a hashtag that would describe you? Hashtag ambitious. Nice. Very good. Um, okay. So if you had a soundtrack or a playlist that you were building that represented your life, what would be one of the songs on that playlist? Um, it would be a classical piece because I think it it satisfies the complexity of my thinking process. You know, you know, classical pieces can be very, very elegant and and monotonous, but sometimes they could be very complex and and, and hard to understand. But at the same time, they're both beautiful. Love it! Wonderful. And if you have a quote that you live by that you would want to pass on to future generations, what would that be? You don't have to be smart or intelligent to be successful in life. You just have to be ambitious and dedicated to what you love. So I think that is a beautiful ending. And if you are you know, good luck to you in terms of your applications and applying to college. So Oscar, if we wanted to learn more about you, Steam Legacy, or some of the projects that you're working on, where would we go to look? You would have to access the school website or look at our school social media page. And then possibly in the future, I will open a website that will highlight all the projects that we've done. So they're readily available to anyone. Wonderful. So we'll look forward to that website when it's ready. Uh, we can definitely share it in our show notes uh, for anybody that's interested. Um, again, thank you so much, Oscar. Is there any last impression that you'd like to leave with the audience today? It doesn't matter where you go. It matters what you do with the knowledge and experience after college and how you use what you learned to change the world around you. Wow. Talk about inspirational. Oscar really knows how to leave a lasting impression and is definitely a strong student leader. I can't wait to see where he ends up next year. Thank you for tuning in to today's podcast. And next week, I have another powerful story coming your way. After learning about the climate movement and hearing about the positive impact young Greta Thunberg is making in her community, my guest, Reina, decided it was her time to bring change to her South Central community in Los Angeles. After all, if Greta can do it, so could she. A few years ago, Reina became vegan and is slowly teaching her Latino family about eating healthy. And trust me, as a fellow Latina, I know firsthand how hard it is to give up traditional Latinx comida. In addition, Reina is starting the very first intersectional environmentalism club on her high school campus. I cannot wait to interview her. To learn more about her journey, tune in next week. And if you like today's episode, please like and subscribe to our podcast. If you do, you'll get an update once a new powerful story is posted. And for more information about College Match and how to support the new students you hear from, visit www.collegematchla.org. I look forward to matching another incredible student to a great college next week, and I hope you'll join me for it. See you next time.